back. Up next, we have a really, really interesting session. I'm excited to hear from Mitesh and Jing, who are going to be talking a little bit about harnessing large language models in enterprise data engineering and on-call revolution. So I feel like we're going to get a really interesting story just here. So let's welcome Mitesh and Jing. Hi, hi both. How are you doing? Hey, we're doing good. How are you guys? Really good. We Very have had good. goodness me so many sessions today about all sorts. Um, we've had prompt engineering, fine tuning, lang chain, semantic kernel, green software. So thinking more about the green, the impact uh, that AI has on uh, the environment and stuff like that. Uh, security, red teaming. Goodness me, I've learned so much. But this. I am very excited for this is a real use case by the sounds of it where you're seeing some really cool impact of using generative AI. Um, but before we, di we dig in any deeper, because I obviously have the, the insight on what's about to happen here, uh, can you both introduce yourself to the community? Sure. Yeah, I can go first. Hey, good morning, afternoon or evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here at the Global AI Conference. Uh, my name is Mitesh and I'm a lead data engineer on the trust and safety team at Airbnb. Uh, I have around a decade of experience building data engineering, data platform, and also most recently machine learning MO, uh, AI products. So I'm totally excited to share uh, my journey in the data engineering space and also um, kind of have, have like a thought provoking idea around how we can use AI for data engineering. I will hand it over to my colleague, Jane, to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jing. Uh, sorry for my voice, kind of uh, lose my voice a little bit. <coughs> yeah, I've oh, been uh, building the... Uh, you're feeling okay. <laughs> yeah, feeling all fine. Uh, apologies. <laughs> Even my voice is not clear. <coughs> yeah, I've been building the platform for 10 years. Uh, I'm mo most recently that we identify the, the large language model can actually improve the uh, efficiency of the our day to day work. And today we are so excited to share with the whole community. Nice. This is fantastic. I, we really appreciate you taking the time to spend time with the community, share your insights, share your experiences. Um, so, if you are you all ready to go? Have you shared your screen, etc.? Sure, let's do that. Wonderful. Whilst we're getting that screen ready, don't forget if you want to take a look at the badges and grab yourself your attendee badge, go to globalai.community slash conference, sign up for an account, watch the live stream from there, and you will be entitled to your attendee badge. And yep. just give me not one second. Quite I'm got trying. that screen yet, so let's keep working on that. Another little call out, you might have seen a really nice uh, bumper sort of trailer. Um, just before this session around our generative AI GitHub repository. It's a really nice set of resources that are available to you. Um, we've done a lot of theory today. We've seen lots of examples. However, I really think, and I think I've called it out multiple times, it's important to go and get hands on. So go and check out this GitHub repository, work through the different samples and see if you can get yourself um, really ready We are, we're still not going to have to share the screen. Are we doing okay over here? Do we need any help? Yeah, for some reason it's not allowing me to do the screen share. Just give me one second. I think I figured it out. Yeah. No problem. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do this. We can Let also can do that talk a bit about the Discord channel, right? Yes. Yeah, please tell us more. Yeah, if you want to learn more about prompt engineering, go check out the Discord channel and follow one of the workshops. We also have our speakers joining that channel as well and sharing more information and more about their experiences there. Cool. I think I'm able to share. Can you confirm if you're able to see my screen? Okay. Yes. Yes, we, we have can. It. There we Good go. Luck. We're all ready to go. Okay. Great, great. Thank we'll you so much. We'll hand it over much. to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, great, everyone. I think we already got uh, our introductions out. So let's get into the current landscape of data engineering because that's the story that we want to tell you how data engineering is getting impacted by AI. And then we'll, I'll talk more about um, the data engineering landscape, uh, try to give a primer on large language models and also the RAG because that is going to be important uh, for the next session uh, or the session uh, slides that Jing is going to cover. I'll later go on talk about uh, bridging LLM with data engineering 
and then next uh, Jing will take over talking about the architecture and the success story for data engineering in in our uh, in our organization and followed by some like the future role uh, in in data engineering so let me show you one quick picture that i ask uh, chat gpt to generate for me about an engineer who is an on call so it kind of did an amazing job uh, telling you know around how a typical data engineering on call looks like so uh, and on the screen you can see me or jing or you know any kind of uh, software data engineer uh, who uh, whose daily life uh, when he's on call is basically it looks like you know they are on fire uh, because you know there's some some of the other stuff going down, systems breaking, data pipelines breaking, uh, data quality issues they kind of happen. So you can see you know there's fire all around, but then we still have to keep our calm and and get to doing uh, our work in order to get the stuff on on and basically running. So that's that's kind of like how the typical engineering on call is. Next, I will cover um, the current landscape of data engineering. So. Um, as you can see on the screen, we'll look at how a typical data engineering process it works. So a data engineering um, uh, architecture, it begins with data collection and that's kind of like the critical source on the left where you see data coming from streaming, batch sources, structured, you think of your relational database, basis, your IoT data, all of that is, is kind of like the first step where you are collecting data uh, from, from different sources, for us in, in our fraud detection and mitigation, this includes collecting user data, transaction histories, property listing, user interactions, and also external data uh, related to a users uh, on our platform. So the quality and the variety of data collect that we collect is pivotal. And that kind of lays the foundation of the next steps, you know, as you can see on the screen, that's, uh, that happens uh, throughout the steps. So the next step you can see is the ingestion step. So this is where the actual transportation of data from the source to the storage system happens and uh, so that it, it is made easier for our users to access, analyze uh, for any kind of you know, downstream application from machine learning to data science to analytics. Think of you know, whatever options you have uh, for getting value out of data. So this is definitely a challenging step, I would say, mainly when you're dealing with large volume of data and also and when your data is varied. So, uh, that is another, you know, a problem we'll look at as we'll talk about data engineering challenges. Uh, another area I want to highlight in the fraud detection scenario that we do at our company is real-time data ingestion, which is crucial, right, for timely detection and action. So the next step in the between, or which is kind of also like the most critical step, is the data processing step. So this is the step which involves majority or like takes majority of time. Uh, in the data engineering pipeline. So this involves cleaning the data, transforming the data into a format that is suitable for analysis. So think of data processing step as, as uh, containing um, further like smaller steps like removing duplicates, correcting for errors, transforming the data into a consistent format so that it can be used for your reporting, your, your further feature engineering pipelines that are used for machine learning uh, data training as well as inferences. So given the nature of fraud detection, like the special attention is uh, paid, uh, we pay a special attention to like anomaly detection, pattern recognition during this phase. The next step is kind of like the, you know, the data storage or like the, you, you see at the bottom, uh, the data storage is where, you know, we actually store this data so that our end users can, can, can collect the data or like consume the data for their downstream impact. So the data analytics is, is kind of the step which involves storing the store, raw data, clean data plus also the curated consumption data so this can range from doing uh, things like writing a simple sql query uh, of, or it could be for your uh, reporting query to more complex predictive modeling uh, and, and machine learning kind of analysis so in in terms of fraud detection so the data analytics is used uh, to identify potential fraudulent activities we also do access the risk and also inform the development of AI models um, to predict and prevent fraud on our platform. So data quality, security, and privacy considerations are paramount throughout this process, especially, uh, like I said, in the sensitive field of fraud detection. Therefore, data engineering, I would say, is not just a like a tech proficiency, but it is also about understanding and navigating the ethical and the legal landscape of data handling. Let's go into the next like come uh, slide in which I'll talk about 
some of the common issues encountered during on call. So I have laid down, if you see on the on the slide, um, different categories of issues that a typical on call would encounter in a data engineering uh, setup. So first of the uh, first of all is the data quality issue because data quality is the primary tenant of a data engineering system because. Uh, think of the the uh, the adage that garbage in garbage out so if we are able to produce quality data the end system or the system that depend on us they are going to produce data so think of it not just from the analytic purpose but also machine learning ai if you're if you're uh, feeding your ai with garbage you know it's going to give you garbage so data quality is paramount here so um, some of the most common problems we see with data quality is the inconsistent or inaccurate data. So basically data corruption. So this could stem from various uh, sources such as like customer uh, support uh, agents, you know, they are adding certain data entry, which could be faulty or incorrect. Uh, and then those entries, they get into our uh, agent cases. So uh, they eventually um eventually kind of determine how our machine learning models are getting the ground to data for their uh training and then how further they can actually make more better inferences right uh so uh, next uh, uh category of um quality of like the data issue i want to mention is the data metric reporting error which is more around like uh when certain uh dashboards are behaving bad in terms of the underlying analytical query engine uh, that supports those analytics are not not doing great. Another kind of error is you can think of data platform error, uh, where your airflow, which is our orchestration system, uh, as well as our data processing systems are down. There could be some system outage, like storage outages, network issues that could happen. They, these things, they also impact a lot of the data engineering uh, pipeline, because as we saw, right, like data processing was with the, the critical or like the most like the heart of the system if imagine if the systems uh, supporting that step is down your entire data pipeline is down so that's another issue a uh, data engineering personnel has to look at all the time when they are uh, trying to diagnose what what happened uh, why are my pipelines not running why is the data not available so next issue uh, that uh, next category of issue is the data availability so this can stem from again data platform but then there are also steps that lead to data inevitability, I mean. Uh, so that could be your upstream data delays, your missing data uh, in the ingestion pipeline, because you know certain step, uh, we did not have strong uh, CICD enforcement. Uh, certain step they just skipped and you know we have now, now bad data or like incomplete data. That's the reason our metrics are not producing the right data, right? Um, I'll go next into uh, like a quick primer on large language model. I know everyone around here definitely has a good idea for large language model, but quickly uh, to to join the context with data engineering, like uh, large language models are like advanced systems that we use for uh, to understand and generate human language. So uh, that human language has to has to understand also like the technical documentation, the different areas of data engineering code that we feed into it. So large language model does a pretty amazing job in terms of understanding that. And we use a lot of, uh, uh, basically we use large language model, a lot of large language model capability to do you know, everything from investigation, uh, the research as well as applying issue diagnosis uh, that we will see later. Uh, next, I'll quickly go give a quick primer on retrieval augmented generation because that is kind of like the heart of the system that uh, later Jing will talk about. Uh, as the architecture for our uh, our uh, data engineering on call uh, buddy or like data engineering on call savior that we want to call it. Uh, so in retrieval augmented system, like to simply explain, think of it as like the analogy of you know a complex cooking dish. Imagine uh, your large language model uh, or like or your chef is is the one who who knows or like how to prepare a gourmet dish, like generating a response. But then you uh, you have the basic ingredients like base knowledge uh, from training that you got but for like specific dishes right like every data engineering team will have like their own specific problem so think of this uh, like you are trying to solve for like a or like a create a special dish you need some special ingredients some recipes uh, which you can think of is like the knowledge base or like the additional information you want to pass it on so this is where racks comes into place right 
uh, it is uh, like having a recipe book or like a pantry, uh, like an external database source where you can quickly fetch this uh, this unique ingredients from the recipe in order to enhance your dish. So that's that's kind of like the analogy I can think of. Uh, next, let's quickly go over bridging what kind of issues LLMs can solve on data engineering. Like I can think of like three major uh, major areas where LLMs can help data engineering work. First thing is we can leverage LLMs to like process and analyze data uh, in terms of enabling more efficient workflows and also like decision making. So because we use large language model for our workflow automation for our different operations use cases. So that's one use case I can think of. Second is the data quality definitely uh, by autonomously like identifying data quality issues by identifying patterns that happens with semantics, data quality can be improved with like without without even name manual intervention. So uh, that is one area where you know you don't I am not saying we want to take the data engineering out of the picture all or, or like completely, but then definitely they can take uh, the help from the support assistant to you know get our stuff done. And the last area is actually the error mitigation. So now that we understand where the data quality or like the data issue is coming from, they can uh, take actions around you know small small things like uh, auto correcting certain uh, data checks or some certain automated recovery of tasks. So think of it as like fixing some issues in real time. So imagine how much of how much of time you, it can save a data engineer. Okay, next I'll hand it over to Jing who will go over the architecture and like the future uh, for data engineering. Uh, thanks, Mithash. Uh, all right. I'm going to talk a little more about the architecture. How do we solve the data engineer on call issue? Which uh, large language. <clears throat> uh, Here is a high level architecture. There are two major components uh, in our system. Uh, the first one is a rag, like Mita just mentioned, and another is a AI agent. Uh, we can all use that to combine workflow and decision making. So the rag part uh, follow pretty standard architecture, like Mita mentioned. Uh, we, we use the index pipeline to collect all the internal knowledge. The freedom to the vector database. <clears throat> and uh, for that, the large line model can understand all the details of the pipeline. So the internal knowledge actually includes your code base, your on call run book, and also the query logs, uh, which has been used for debug issues. The next major component uh, on the left is AI agent, uh, power workflow. Uh, we have to admit that <coughs> engineer on call uh, is actually not an easy task. And, and it is especially true for data engineer as well. Usually, the data engineers team uh, suffer extremely high volume and ad hoc requests for so many small tasks. And there is always a common pattern between those requests. So, to solve the issue, we rely on large language model uh, plus the, the new uh, chain of thought technology to build a dynamic workflow to dive deeper into the each individual uh, data issues, just like what human data engineers do. And nice slide, please. <coughs> so uh, let us walk through an uh, example together. Let, let us assume uh, there was an e-commerce company. Uh, the company had two critical tables, the user table and the sales table. And in the middle screen, on top of that, uh, your team, as assume is a growth team, need to build a pipeline to find the most loyal customer by aggregating sales data for each individual user. But one day, unfortunately, there is a data quality uh, check failure. The data quality check is about the total revenue that should grow over time without considering the, the refund. Before the large remodel, model, the, co the common situation is that the data engineer in the team uh, or, or the on-call engineer need to, to run a bunch of analytic uh, queries, uh, deep dive on the upstream tables, verify the queries, and after hours of research, luckily, uh, the data engineer on-call find what happened. But unfortunately, uh, the, the latest partition uh, of the user table got dropped accidentally for some reason. I assume we don't know. And usually, 
the the next problem also comes into the picture is that if the if the user table is not owned by by the team, you have to connect upstream owners and 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 then fix and fix regenerate regenerate the partnership. And this might sounds very tedious and inefficient. Sometimes you need to wait uh, for a couple hours or even day to solve uh, a data quality issues. But it's actually the, the current situation for most of the data engineering teams today. On the contrast, switch large language model and chain of thought, we just need to feed failure log, data schema, queries to large language model. It can automatically brainstorm the potential issue, uh, generate strategy queries to, to prove all different hypotheses. <laughs> and in the end, the AI agent can execute the query and then validate different issues as addressed for the next step. And as you might notice, uh, someone ha might have a concern of data privacy issue, but in our workflow, we don't have to share the data with large amount at all. What we just share is just metadata. Yeah. And you can imagine when all the data engineering team adopt this solution, no one really need to pin other team, other people in the midnight. And Nobody need to be getting blamed by data quality issue, which is not actually uh, from the data set you team. Next slide, please. Here is the early result of we have achieved. A very good percentage of heavily manual tasks can be automated with AI solutions. For the data quality, a good percentage of data quality checks, creation, monitoring, and even debugging can automated. <laughs> Secondly, the anomaly alerts improvement. The large language model is extremely helpful to audit all the existing data quality checks to reduce the false positive alerts and make sure all the alerts are actually actionable. And, and the last one is task automation. Ad hoc requests autom um, <coughs> sorry. Ad hoc requests not only include the simple ones, so such as like there was a table deprecation upstream. Or there's upstream schema changes and we have to change our pipeline. But also includes also more complex tasks, such as the ad hoc back creation for analytics for reporting, smart pipeline for, uh, parameter tuning. All those things can be uh, can be uh, automated with our solution. Next slide, please. Today with the AI uh, in the field, uh, so we can we, we can achieve the enhanced data quality, uh, advanced anomaly detection, and automatic recovering for any failures we have seen. And we strong we strongly believe in the future we can we can expand the capability to more self serve steps by leveraging the latest AI agent cap cap capacity and focus on the uh, self servability to further reduce the human cost in the on, in, in the on call process. Next slide, next slide, please. And here is a good example of how our team used the solution for the data engineering on call. You can imagine we can lay down in a beach and just enjoy the holidays. Next slide, please. And thank you for thank you all. And, uh, we are honored to share our experience with the, the uh, global AI community. Yes. yes. Are we back? Yeah. Yes, we are back. Sorry about that slight delay just there. Yeah. We were checking our uh, our mics. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> me. A great session though. We wanted to make sure we were completely silent in the background as you kind of walk through that different process. Um, I did have one immediate question that came to mind, if I could, just about obviously you mentioned you've been in the space for quite a while around data. You're obviously doing very advanced things with your data pipelines as well over there at Airbnb with data quality. And it's fascinating to see what you have done. Before embarking on this project, was there any perceived barriers or things that you kind of came up against? I think you know people are still in that space where it's a little bit like, is it ready for production? Like, did, did you did you find anything like that? Oh, I think I think you might not have 
Oh, I think you might just be on mute. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was sorry. Hear you. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was saying, yeah, this is not like a unique problem to us, but then there were other teams within the company, like the software product engineering teams, machine learning teams. So we kind of partnered with them as like the first POC, uh, build that bot, like internal bot, like a data engineering bot that kind of uh, figure out like what were the patterns of issues that they have seen. And then uh, we analyze over a period of time, how is it working, like working for them? What sort of benefits they are getting for them? So yeah, it it it, it made us easy because you know it's uh, it was not like a team bounded uh, problem, but they, everyone was facing it. Mm. So that was kind of there was like a lot of interest from you know different like management level also. Okay, yeah, let's let's do this. Like we'll provide you with the resources. Let us know what you want, and then uh, you guys you know go ahead and build those uh, build those pro product system for us and help with the operation excellence. Nice. And so did it, did you run it behind the scenes for a little bit? Like, did, were you uh, co-piloting it almost in the sense that you were like, okay, it's, it's showing us what decisions it make and actually are there things mm -hmm. we would do? Did you kind of do some of that testing? Right, definitely. Yeah, we did that co-pilot. Like we started with our team as like the first uh, pilot use case, uh, looking at uh, different issues. Like we, we had like a historical log of, you know, all the issues that we have seen in the past how much time uh, a data engineer is spent, let's say uh, on-call works seven days a week uh, during their return. Uh, so maybe they spent like 30 hours a week. So we wanted to reduce it. Like we did this kind of uh, experiment uh, with different teams, like our team, different team figured out, okay, uh, there was this metric like change shared in the presentation. We were able to reduce that 30% uh, of like the time from that actual time we spent. So yeah, definitely did that behind the scene in a co-pilot and then once we got that numbers that we we felt like we are confident enough to share with our leaders they said okay let's go ahead and full swing get everybody on board it i bet that was a great meeting <laughs> to be a part of yeah yeah <laughs> one last question yeah. from my side um looking back are there things that you would have done differently if you look back at this project or do you have any tips for anyone who, who gets who's getting started with this where should they start? Sure. Those are two questions, wanna... to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Did you, do you have any insight you want to share quickly? Yeah, I would say um, large line model uh, is amazing. And I also strongly believe it's uh, still under investment. Mm -hmm. You can find more, and more value from the ladies advancement of large model every day. And trust, yeah. trust do it. Uh, you don't have to pay the big thing. <laughs> Even the small thing can add value to your day to day work. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I would say uh, I would uh, echo what Jing said. Uh, go ahead, like your, your company might have something uh, on the AI, AI kind of tooling. Go use it. Like, don't, don't mm -hmm. just say that, uh, okay, I don't have Microsoft Copilot or something, but then there might be something uh, like a smaller API that your team or like internal data infra team have built. Just go leverage it. Smaller things, you know, you can build on top of them. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the advice I want to share. Start experimenting. Don't wait. Yeah, start, yeah. Sure. Yep. start building those those experiences. Yeah, very good tip. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no, I was going to say it's very different types of tips and questions for this session because I think it's the lived experience here that is, you know, incredibly valuable for our audience here. Like, you know, we're all into tech and we can all learn about different tech, but here and about experiences, I think, is what helps people kind of move along that journey as well. And so, yeah, for such a data driven company like Airbnb, obviously data is your is your source, isn't it? In some senses yeah. um, of everything to kind of take those steps and see those improvements. That's a really impressive story. So thank you so much for sharing with us. It's been, it's been a pleasure to listen. Thanks a lot. Have thank a great you so day. much. All right, we will speak to you later. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Fantastic. So, what a great session there, kind of talking more about some of the real use cases that have seen some incredible results by using generative AI, as with it, within their words, on some of the smaller things and just kind of trying and experimenting with them. So, yeah, really nice story. Um, go check out, obviously, all the other sessions uh, in order to be able to build on top of what we've just learned there. And so with that, we will jump to a short break and we'll be back with another session.